auspicious a start, um, and we shall see what happens. So uh, if you recall from last time, we didn't get as far into the census stuff as uh, I wanted to. So we're going to do some of that. And then we'll start talking about charts and graphs as well. Uh, but before we get to that, I uh, want to do announcements. Um, all right, so project one, OK? So there are several projects that we'll do over the course of this class. It's kind of like a homework or a lab, except a little bit longer, a little bit more detailed. Um, and you can do it collaboratively. So two people to a project, OK? I highly recommend you do it with someone who is in your discussion section, um, because that way you will have a better chance of knowing them. Um, but you can do it any way you want. When you go to submit your work in Gradescope, there is the option to add multiple people, OK? So you don't do your own entries. You do one entry with two people on it. Does that make sense? OK. If you screw it up and you do an individual entry, that's OK. It's just easier for us if you only do one. Um, then that way we have a little bit less stuff to grade. Um, so the way we do this first project, though, is we actually do it in kind of two parts almost. Uh, so the whole thing will be released today, but you only have to do it until the checkpoint by the uh, 15th. Sorry. Um, so next Tuesday, uh, I don't know about all of you, but dates generally mean nothing to me. Uh, so unless you tell me it's like next Tuesday or the week after that or whatever, I will completely forget about it. So that's why I try to put in like next Tuesday. So you submit up, I think it's up through question eight or so uh, is basically the first checkpoint. And then uh, you do the second half over the course of the next week-ish. Okay, does that make sense? Any questions? Yeah. Does it super deep on work or? Nope, nope, you get to do it all. Uh, so there's, uh, we might skip a homework in there. Uh, I can't remember, but go by the syllabus, it's generally correct. Um, but no, it's usually in parallel. Um, so hopefully it's not too much work, but it is, uh, like I said, practice is everything uh, when you're doing this stuff. So it really makes a big difference if you do more of it. Um, so that's how it works. Uh, like I said, if you have any other questions, feel free to follow up. Um, if you feel like the workload is also too much, uh, let us know about that as well. Um, but generally speaking, we think you can get it done. They did it last semester and it was just great. So. Uh, we're pretty confident you should be able to do it. Um, however, I also wanted to tell you about the midterm. So I've never heard of a midterm, but uh, apparently what I meant to say was midterm, um, but had a spelling error. And that will be on March 3rd, which is just before spring break. So you can go on spring break, promptly forget everything that you learned about data science until then, uh, and come back and I'll have to restart. But the midterm will be on the third, just so you don't have to worry about it over break. Uh, and we will do it. It will be in this classroom. Um, but as you can tell, it's a, it's a very tight room. So we may come up with, it may not be kind of a traditional pencil and paper uh, test. Uh, so, you know, kind of wait and wait for that. We'll see how we're going to try to pull it off so that uh, you can work on it independently without it being a huge pain in the butt. Um, and as I said the last time and this time, just make sure you have a Jupyter instance. Uh, and the lecture directory. Uh, if you notice, I flattened it out. So now they're just in the same directory as uh, the, ham the homework. Uh, so they should be easy to find. Uh, and that's about it. Any questions? Okay. Uh, do take a look at this project as soon as you can. Um, you know, it's always better to, if you tend to procrastinate like I do, it's always better to get a handle on like when, when can you procrastinate until uh, by taking a look at the work, uh, even if you're not ready to do it yet. Uh, so do take a look at it just so you can get a sense of how much work it's going to be. Um, and we do the checkpoint, just to make sure you're on track. And then we'll do the, the final, the end of the project. Uh, hopefully you'll find it interesting. And away we go. But to start off, we want to know what function adds a column to a table.
All right, clicky clacky. All right, that was pretty good. All right, looks like a lot of you uh, did know that one. That's pretty cool. Um, so basically, you get uh, you know if you want to add to it, you use width columns. Um, I don't think num columns exist. I don't think um, you know. And then uh, top the column is more like pulling something out. And oh, now we get the correct answer. So uh, as you might have guessed, we're going to just do a little bit of review with tables. So uh, with the table, to get a new table, um, you know, you can read in a file name. Uh, usually these are uh, comma separated values or CSV files. I will usually use the term CSV rather than uh, saying it all every time. Um, and CSVs look a lot like a spreadsheet. Uh, and then if you want to create an empty table, you can just use two parentheses like that. And then you can add columns to it by hand. Um, and then you have a bunch of other functions that you can get. Uh, you can rearrange the data in the table in whatever way you so desire. Uh, and those return new tables so that you can, you know, reassign them or put them in some other variable. All right. And then quickly, we're going to talk about attributes. Uh, so numerical attributes are attributes that are numbers, right? But they are numbers that actually are numbers rather than numbers that happen or rather than you know, kind of labels or strings or something like that that happen to look like numbers, right? And that, that can be a weird distinction. Um, and categorical is all of the attributes that are kind of everything else, right? So these are things more like labels. So, you know, if we use the example from the census, um, I'm not gonna use the example from the census, um, but the idea is basically if you, if you're just because it's a number doesn't mean it's not categorical, okay? So you gotta, Think about the context it's being used in. And I couldn't remember exactly what the question was, so that's why I decided to punt. Um, so uh, what type of attribute comes from a fixed inventory? So does anybody know what it, well, we'll take a stab at the question and we'll explain it a little bit more. Um, and while we're doing that, just keep in mind, or do remember, right, I do try to record every lecture, and I post them to YouTube as quickly as I am able. Uh, I'm not a very good video editor, so it sometimes takes me a little while, but I usually try to get them up there within a week. So if you ever want to go back and see something, uh, it should be there. Uh, I noticed the mic has been kind of blown out a little bit, but I think it's understandable. All right, got to get those last few in. All right, we're just gonna keep going. So otherwise we're never gonna make it. Um, okay, so a fixed inventory, I'm not sure if I used those exact keywords before. So I just wanted to kind of explain it a little bit uh, in retrospect. Um, so inventory just means a list of something, whatever it is, okay? So has anybody played any video games before? Right, uh, so like Minecraft, right? You have all your different, you know, kind of tools and and like, what do they call it in that? Materials, I guess, um, that you can use to build new things. That screen where you uh, choose what tool you're using or whatever, that's usually referred to as an inventory. So that's an inventory in kind of the gaming sense, um, but there's lots of other examples. Um, you know, you could inventory my pockets, uh, which usually have a lot of junk in them. Um, but so a fixed inventory means a fixed list, okay? So for example, um, you know, you might have the census-based list of, uh, you know, races that it identifies, okay? It's a fixed list. One of those items is other, okay? But still, it's a, it's a fixed list. All right, so let's talk about the census. Uh, so from last time, I gave a little bit of a brief introduction to it. Not really gonna cover it too much here again, but basically every, every 10 years under the US Constitution, 
the US is required to take a census of all the people to figure out what the representation at the federal level, actually at the state and local level as well, uh, to some extent, but at the federal level of, per the constitution, uh, what that representation should look like. Um, now the census data that we get, um, and soonish, I really need to update my data to the 2021, which was, uh, you know, very recently, obviously. Um, but this is still using an older census, just because I know the data is clean and all that stuff. It's a lot of data. Um, but so the one I'm working with here is actually the 2010. But that's fine because I'm just showing you examples. Um, and but I want to show a couple of things. So the sex column is one of those fixed inventories, okay? It's either a one or a two, where one is male and two is female. Um, but the population estimate um, indicates here what year that estimate is from um, or what it actually is. So if it's a year that happens to be the real year, like 2010, then it's um, the real data. Whereas 2014, for example, is an estimate that done by the census office. Um, and then there's a couple of special things uh, where in zero, that's basically the addition of all the genders. Um, and then a 99 or 999 is the total of all ages. So this is a common trick to be able to basically embed more information into your data set uh, without having to introduce new columns, okay? Uh, it is very, very common. Personally, I think it is very, very dangerous, okay? Sure, it's unlikely we're gonna have many people living to 999 anytime soon, okay? But, uh, you know, we're definitely having this trouble with like gender, for example, where um, the kind of traditional understanding of gender is starting to change. And so what, like when you, when you embed information directly into it of a different type, right? Because what we talked about was like, when you're talking about categorical data, it should all be of the same type. Right or numerical data for that matter too. So you don't you don't do a you know a column that is half kilometers per gallon right versus miles per gallon, right? It's got to all be of the same type. So I really dislike when data sets do this, but it is a very common practice. It's just if you ever are in a situation where you need to set up something like this, be very careful. And it's very dangerous where you might collide or or something unexpected might happen. And now you don't have a place to put this new type of data that is like all the rest um, because you've taken that spot with some special thing. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Let's see if you can remember what the last slide is, basically. So, matching. And we have 13 left. How many people are doing this on their phone versus doing it on a computer? Like raise your, let's see, left hand for phone, right hand for computer. Interesting, okay. All right, let's close it there. Good enough. Ooh, somebody hit another wire. All right, I find this ridiculously unreadable, um, but I happen to know the answers. That makes it a little easier. So with the a zero in the sex column, it means it's the total of both male and female. Uh, 999 is the total of all people whose ages are accounted for. So instead of it just being a count of people who are you know three years old, it's all of the ages added together. Uh, one is, is male and two is female. 
All right. Um, and yeah, and this is basically the comments I made a minute ago. Um, you know, so just keep that in mind. It's actually two different types of data in the data set. So now we can talk about the actual data. All right. So what I'm hoping is we maybe can get some following along, but uh, the first thing we want to do is read in the data. Um, and mostly because it's difficult to type, uh, it should already be in your um, file. Sorry, I forgot to run this. All right, I might take a second to load, but it should get there quickly enough. Um, all right, so what I want you to play around with a little bit is how would you display the total number of men, women, and both for real data in 2010 and estimated data in 2014? Okay. We'll give you a few minutes to. And remember the reason you have to go. Really? Oh, look, it's not connecting for you either. Sweet. Uh, okay. Well, hmm. that's going to make this uh, demo a lot harder. You can run it any way you want. The only reason that I use this or ask you to use this is if you run into problems, I want to make sure, like, show it to me in a known quantity in like the SEC um, to make sure it's not a problem with your setup. I just don't want it to debug every person's laptop. That makes sense. All right, let me just see if this reloads for me. If not, it should be fun. Uh, I just want to say it works for me. I'm on the EPU. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, if any of you are unaware, uh, EDU Rome is a uh, collaboration like worldwide of universities with basically internet access. Um, so your creds that work on EDU Rome here will also work at nearly every university in the entire world. Um, so if you need Wi-Fi when you're traveling somewhere, it can be really handy. Um, and I think that works because you as a student were able to log into EDU Rome, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So it's just you have to actually add your email, like the at edu. Well, there you go. yeah, it's definitely not as high quality normally as the like actual university, but it can be super handy if you're traveling. All right. So it's working for me now. Is it working for all of you? No. Yeah. My issue is that I'm on infinitely on the SEC. I think it's not starting the session. But okay. All right. I'll have to talk to the SEC folks because it, it seems like we're we're hitting their capacity. So um all right. Well so you know try to follow along if you can. If you can't uh then uh you'll just have to answer questions blind. Um <laughs> all right so I have Entirely the wrong notebook open. Sorry. But you really don't want to see me type live because that goes for it. All right. So to get started, so what do we do here? Um, well, it's this is a relatively easy problem to solve because what we want to do is we just want to see a new table with just certain columns, right? So we just talked about that a few minutes ago. Um, so what we do is we give it a brilliant name, like partial, because I'm not good at naming things. Um, and we do full, and then what's the, what's the um, method that I use off of the table to select only certain columns? It's right there in the, in the sentence. Usually I do better than that. Um, all right, select, and then I'm going to cut and paste the actual names to reduce typos and the amount of time it will take me to type this. And then just to, so you can see what happened, 
So now I only grab those columns, and so that's what I wanted. Um, okay, and so now we want, so one of the things that is one of the traps, right, that pretty regularly is like, you get this information, it's kind of got this really cryptic encoding and everything else, and you learn it because you have to figure out the data. But then when you want to try to present it to somebody else, you should really try to make it more consumable by other people. So this is why you might want to relabel columns on the regular, right? So um, in this case, oops, sorry, is this big enough? I always forget to ask. More? Um, better? Legible? All right. Um, Feel free to like raise your hands and say something in the future. I just forget um, because I, I use this for me too. And at that font size right on my computer, I can't read it at all. Uh, so, um, okay. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this relabel. Okay. Um, and I'm going to give it the number, like the position of the column that I want, but it's zero based, right? Um, and then I'm going to give it a new name uh, just to make it a little easier to read. And we're going to give it a new table name called simple. Just, you know, I'm not going to name the things. Um, but basically, it's the same data, just a little bit clearer what it is. Um, but that's a super handy thing. The other thing I use that for a lot too, um, this isn't a great example. Um, but, and like, so for the census, it, it, it's pretty consistent. But a lot of the time, the names, the label names won't be very consistent. So like the, the casing will be messed up, right? Or there'll be spaces in the names, stuff like that. So all I can use relabeling to also make it like shorter and easier to type. Um, because if, if it's consistent, then I can usually type it without looking, right? I don't have to go back and check what the labels are to find out if I got the right column or whatnot. So I'll often do that too. All right. Now, we want to do the total number of people by age, uh, 2010 and 2014. So, how might I find out? Like, oh, let's let's go through it. So, now what I can do is I can now take that table and make it even more usable by sorting it, so that we can actually see. Okay, there's whatever this is, uh, 3.9 million people in 2010 of either gender, right? Um, and then we have this many males, right? And this many females. Um, and then we have who are of age zero, okay? So newborns. Um, and then, you know, add each item. But if we want to get to the actual total, does anybody know how we would get, because so what we want now, like if we want the, the total of all of these, so we know we need a 999 in this column, right? So there's a couple of different ways we can get to this, but what would be the easiest way to get this, you know, basically the 999 visible on the screen without displaying all 300 some odd rows? Exactly. So we just sort it in the reverse order. Uh, and for the sake of consistency, oops. Right, so there are obviously other ways we can get to it, but this is fast and easy, right? We know that this is the biggest number. Um, so now we can see that there's about 3 billion people of either gender, and it goes up by about a million, no, 100 million, um, the, if four years later. But this is an estimate, and this is a real census. All right, so what we use these techniques for, right, is to try to get a sense of, of the data, right? We're trying to understand what's in this massive table. Because just looking at the rows, you know, it's you can't wrap your head around it. So various tricks we do, right, is we throw away columns we don't really care about. It's 
use some sorts to try to look at the data in different directions and different ways. Excuse me. But then we can actually get to some better visualizations where we can pare down the data even more by, oh, I already had it. So we can get the data pared down even more. So now we're actually only going to get the stuff that's not 999 and everything where, um, yeah, and then, but we're going to get all of the genders, right? So what we're going to do here is first poll, this is what where does, right? Everything in the age that's a number smaller than 999. Then from that result, we're going to get all the ones where it's both genders, right? That's what this means. And we're going to drop that column once we pull that data. So now we should have a table that is all the numbers broken down, but with all the genders combined together, and we're going to lose the gender information. Okay, because for whatever reason, what we want to know here is we just want to compare the you know all genders by age. Yeah. Can you have a bit of where the the um the biggest input is in part? Yep. So that's the relabeling. We just do it by its column number and then name and then whatever your new name is. Um, one thing I'll point out, because I'm not sure it's I don't know if we've explained it, but so we know this is a table, right? And we know the result of this is a table. So that means we can cascade stuff off of it. That's why we have like the dot here, and then we can do a dot here. If this had been like a show or something that didn't actually return a table, we can't keep adding on to it, right? Because what I'm relying on here is a table and then another table, which will then result in another table. Okay, so that's why I can cascade those periods to indicate new methods. All right, hopefully you caught up. Um, and I do try to drop the correct file at the end of the lecture. Um, it takes me sometimes a couple of days. Just to try to understand the data better. Um, so, you know, first I sorted it by uh, basically in ascending order which, you know, tells me, you know, the zero, you know, the little kids, right? But I wanted to know what was the total population. So that's why I sorted it in reverse so that I'd get 999 at the top. But there's no, there's no good reason aside from I'm trying to wrap my head around what's in this data set. Okay, that's the goal. That makes sense. Drop call. So this means only get me get me a new table. So I have this no ninety nine table, right? So I've already done that part. But then get me a new table where it's both only the numbers that are both gender. So the zero means no no gender. And then I drop that column because I don't care about that information anymore. Because when I did that where, right, like all of the, that whole column would just be zero, right? So why do I have it at all? I just drop it. All right, but to make it even easier to understand what we're doing, oh, I forgot to set the result. All right, so this is going to get a little cut off. So, but just imagine. Um, so, what I can do is I can actually plot the ages very easily onto a line graph, right? And as you might imagine, we start out with a, you know a, a, you know kind of a pretty consistent number of people, and then weirdly it starts to drop off. Any ideas why that might be? Yeah, exactly. So death and taxes, right? The two things that happen to everyone. Um, so basically what you're seeing is how people, you know, where the average kind of lifespan looks like. And I'm sorry, it doesn't really fit all on the screen, but, you know, so 
So we have in this population set, we have basically no one who lives past 100, right? Um, and we have lots of people who are born. Um, and then, you know, you can go gather the rest. All right, so let's go back here. All right. Wait, am I supposed to go back? Yeah, sorry. Um, okay, so so we came to this slide, so you can see this slide. Now we're gonna go back to the notebook. Um, I thought that seemed weird when I had it put together in the first place, but you know, whatever. All right, so to talk some more about uh, like charts and graphs in general. So um, what we have over there is a, like a line graph or a line plot. Um, this text tends to use the word plot just because that's the same language it uses uh, to actually do it and just to try to remind you, but it's the same idea as a line graph, okay? Um, so, Oh, this sorry. This is the same activity. Um, sorry, because of the timing, I had to combine lectures together and stuff. Um, all right, so we'll look at this plot again. All right, but let's start. Doing some other things. So. Okay, so we can see there's 2010 and age, right? But but there's no like indication of like what does this mean, right? Um, so what we do is we try to label the graph, and that's what this little comment is, you know, kind of remarking on. And we have a few different ways we can do that. And so the first one. So this is kind of the first one. So we talked about comments before. You can just put in comments anywhere. So we can just put a comment in the cell that indicates what this thing is. Okay. So it that's okay if you're doing it in a notebook. Um, but you know, so it doesn't actually change the graph at all. It just puts a comment in the place where you're rendering it that indicates what it is. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is slightly nicer. Which is that we want to, um, so in this time, we're going to actually, we're going to do the graph, right? But then we're also just going to print out US population kind of near it so that we can see them being kind of correlated. So one of the things that you may find confusing is that generally speaking, when you're doing these notebooks, the, uh, the graphs or the pictures or whatever will usually get pushed below everything else. So that's why even though I have those commands, I have the plot first and then I have the print statement, it does the print and then the plot. So generally speaking, the graph will be below it. It's just one of those kind of weird little things. Shouldn't matter to you most of the time, but this is just another way I can label that, um, that graph. But then kind of the nicest way, which you don't need to worry about too much, um, is why is it sorry this is an there's a bug in my code my bad uh i think that's right yeah so that's what's wrong with it no Oh. So the last way you can do it is kind of the nicest way, right? Is that we can actually, you know, kind of set up the plot, but then we can actually do things to the plot before it actually renders it. And so that's what this second line is doing. You don't really need this for this class, um, but you know, it's kind of like if you want to play around with it, it's there and you can do stuff with it. Uh, there's a lot of other features there, 
And if you go look up the documentation for plots, uh, which is referenced in the top, uh, it can tell you other things that you can do, like color change and things like that. Yeah. Uh, type up. There should not be a semicolon there. I'm actually surprised it didn't error. That's a comment. All right. Sorry, somebody else have another question? Do I see a hand? No. All right. What are we? How are we on time? Good. All right. Um, however, what we can also do is things that are slightly more interesting, um, where we can actually put multiple lines in the graph. Um, and, you know, I can fix things like this and stuff like that, but, you know, for this, it's a little easier just to print it out or whatever. So if I just tell it to kind of plot the age, it'll do it based on all those categorical columns by default. Okay. So you got to be careful of that a little bit, but the really nice thing here is I only have those three columns, right? So as a result, I can actually get two lines, one from 2010 and one from 2014. And as you can tell, over the course of those four years, people are starting to live longer, right? And so that's a really interesting thing that you can see from kind of looking at a graph that you may not see if you just look at that wall of numbers. All right. And uh, one thing I will point out, um, these different kinds of charts, uh, they seem to be from prior semester, right? This seemed to be something people found very confusing. So. If you don't understand them, make sure you either talk to us or, you know, but make sure you understand them because they will be on exams about when to use which graph and why. Uh, and uh, for, some people, for some people, they find it difficult. Uh, so this is a line graph or a line plot or a plot. Uh, it's all the same thing. And we use them a lot. All right. Let me just see. All right, if we go here, okay. But let's do even more interesting things where we can say, okay, so just like we did before with the with the everybody together, what if we get an array of just the males? Okay, so it's only the people who have real ages, it's not the totals, where the sex is equal to one, and then because it'll just be a repeating one over and over again. We just drop that entire column. Sorry, it's not an array. This will be a table. Um, and then same with females, except the sex is equal to two, so that we get the female data. And it doesn't really print anything, but um, but then we can make a whole new table. that has kind of the parts we care about, right? So we're going to say, here's the population of 2014. Um, and because we want to just look at the ages of you know, males and females in 2014. So what we can do is off the males table, we can pull the age column. Doesn't, this doesn't matter, right? We can pull this from the male table or the female table. Um, and then we pull out this 2014 column because that's the year we care about. And then we'll pull out the female column, which is 2014. And we'll end up with a new table that has all of that information. So now we could actually compare, instead of looking at like 2010 versus 2014 of total ages, or sorry, of total uh, the genders, um, instead we can break them up and then we can do the same kind of thing. And what I think is super nice, right, is that we can just use the exact, pretty much the exact same construct to get a, almost like a completely different graph, right? Um, and so hope we can see the colors. Um, so what, what does this graph tell us, in, at least in 2014, about women versus men? Uh, how about you in the second row? All right, can you scroll back up? Yep. <laughs> Good enough? Uh, yes. Oh, okay, this whole block. Um, so basically, it's just doing with column. Uh, all right, does anybody have an answer for my question? Uh, 
Anybody else? You've answered a bunch of questions. So how about you? Women are living longer than that. Yeah, exactly. All right. Hopefully you caught most of that. Like I said, I'll drop the notebook afterwards. Um, so, and I don't know that we use that table again. So I'm going to keep going. Um, so as you can see, right, the yellow line is kind of slightly to the right of the of the blue line. Um, I know it kind of looks black, but it's actually blue. Um, but I think it's kind of interesting. There's less women born, at least in 2014, than there are men. Um, yet the women tend to live longer. All right, and then oops. let's see how we're doing on time. Okay, so sorry, my cheat sheet also gets magnified, so it's a little hard to read. Um, okay, so let's say we want to calculate the percent of women. Uh, for each individual age. So I'll try to type this one more so that you all can keep up a little easier. Um, but, you know, mind my typos. So I have that 2014 table. And then I'm going to take the males column out of it and add the females column. To it. All right. And I'll get a total. So who can tell me like what will this result be? What what will be in total? Right. So it's gonna it's gonna basically add them together, right? So in fact, it'll be the same thing as if I hadn't thrown out the zero, right? Um, but this is a, you know, exercise for the reader it shows you a little bit of a different way to, to be able to calculate these kinds of things. Um, all right. Oh, I forgot I was typing. So, hold on. so if I want to get to that percent female, now that I have the, um, now that I have the total, how do I figure out what the percent of female is? Yeah. All right, so what do I have to do next? Right, so now remember when I do column, what I get is an array back, right? So as a result, this is an array of just the numbers. So I can like connect it, whatever. I can do some operation between this array and this array. And in this case, it's division. And then to make it, oh my goodness. And then let's just print it. All right. So not terribly pretty, but now we know what the percent of the population is at all different ages. And kind of as we saw before, it's slightly less than 50% at the younger ages, right? And slightly, actually a lot over 50% at the older ages. So, but then we can also make it a little easier to consume by rounding it. And I don't think we've talked about this yet. So np.round will just round whatever you feed it. Um, and so I'm going to give it that percent female array, um, and as as directed, right? We want to round it to three digits. So I pass in a three as the second parameter, and then I'm just going to print it again. Um, you know, basically, so all we're trying to do is slice off some of those numbers so we can get it a little bit. You know, easier on the screen, um, but it should be basically the same. But again, 
we're trying we're primarily trying to explore this information and so that's why we, we want to mess around with it and do things like rounding to make sure that we understand what's in there um but then now that we have this nice array we can actually put it back into our table so we don't have to calculate it again and technically speaking we could have done this in fewer steps but you get the idea so we do with column And we'll give it a name. You know, you know. And we just give the array because an array and a column are the same. Um, let's see if I type the right. And now, so now our table actually has that percentage built right in. Um, and obviously, we could then do the mails uh, and add that information. But now, oops, um, we can actually plot that directly so we can see it as a graph instead of as, um, sorry, instead of just as an array of numbers. Person. And we can see, oops, we need a little bit more here. And so what I want to point out though is that you notice it starts at 48, right? So it's this this never gets to zero on the y-axis, okay? Because we don't have any numbers that are just down there. Um, so one of the things to keep in mind is you can scale it. So you want to think about whether this is what you want to present, or do you want to present it from zero, even though you don't have any numbers down there. Um, but so as you can see, now we can very easily see uh, that kind of shift of you know women living longer than men because they just become a much bigger portion of the population. Um, however, the thing that is interesting here is that because of how the y-axis is laying itself out. This looks really sharp, right? So you got to be careful of this kind of thing too. And then this goes back to that thing I was just trying to explain, where I can be, you got to be careful about what you're displaying. And I am going to paste this one so it's a little easier. But so what I'm going to do instead is I'm this time I'm going to plot it. Um and um and um I'm going to actually tell the y limit. So this is how I set it from zero to a hundred. Um, and look at that. We'll have a nice error. Oh, yeah. That'll teach me a cut and paste stuff. It bothers me when things are inconsistent. Um, so when you kind of set up the scale so that it's what you know, like a full scale, so zero to a hundred, the, the curve in a sense is less dramatic, right? So it kind of, it's interesting, right? Like we're seeing the exact same data plotted the exact same way, but because we changed the scale of it, now we, we, we kind of want to draw a different conclusion. Yeah. If I wanted my graph to go uh, by every 10 on the y-axis, is there a way to do that? Yeah, but I always have, it's like, like I, these are things I always have to look up. So you you um, basically on that plot, uh, there's a whole doc you can mess with all kinds of different things. Um, but these are the kinds of things I'm bad at memorizing because I just you use them so infrequently that you kind of just go and look it up each time. Um, all right, so that was line graphs. So now we're going to talk about scatter plots. All right, does anybody know what a scatter plot is? All right, let's go with you in the back. Yeah. Um, and to do that, so uh, this is a table about actors. Um, and I don't know if I've used it so far, but we use it a lot in this class. So uh, you, you will get to know it. Um, so, what if we wanted to know
And uh, let me start over. Um, so intuitively enough, much like the plot, right? To get a plot, we use scatter to get a scatter. And does anybody have a suggestion for what, what might make a good scatter plot? So we had a few people in here who know what a scatter is. So what would be an idea for a, a scatter plot that might be interesting? Yeah. No, okay, yeah. Uh, what I'm looking for is like, what column should I compare to what column? Right, so I could do one and two, like, um, sorry, one and two. Yeah, so the total amount of money they made versus the number of movies, um, which would be interesting. Um, In fact, that's the one I had in my notes. Um, I was like, that seems, that seems really familiar. Um, so I'm going to cheat a little bit so that I don't have to type everything clearly. Um, and so we can see, so, so this is fine, but let's reverse it because it might be a little easier to read. So we can do the exact same thing, but I want to reverse it by And so these two graphs, right, are showing the exact same data. It's just I'm kind of I shifted which one was the x and which one was the y axis um, because I think this is a little easier to read because we have smaller numbers on the bottom. Um, but there's no validity to that. It's just an opinion, right? So we can see here that we have, you know, most people seem to have made, I think it's, this is probably, uh, I can't remember what scale that is, 3 million, I think. We talk about it more later. Um, but whatever this number is, 3,000 something um, and 40, right? So it seems like there's kind of this relation, uh, maybe it's a little bit lower, maybe it's closer to 2750. Um, and we start to see that kind of the sweet spot for, number of movies you make and how much money you make. So, wait. but that's the total versus, um, we do have another field in there. Ooh, I didn't realize I scrolled so far. Um, we do have another field in there that might be also, or relatedly interesting. So. If we look at it as average per movie instead of like total dollars, um, then we can maybe get some other metric there. I'll copy that one too. And so interesting, right? At least for me, I think it's interesting. It's like the more movies you make, on average, the, the less dollars you make. So I think it's also kind of interesting. Um, kind of makes sense, but you know, so there's got to be some doozies in there that are throwing off your overall average. Um, did I scroll again? Yes. So let's go back to the slides. Sure. So this is where we kind of talk about the, the, the rules, right? So a line graph or a plot, um, you know, line plot, you know, there's a lot of different kind of names for that, but generally speaking, it's a line graph and the command we use is called plot. And then a scatter or a scatter plot is, uh, you know, just scatter. Like I said, these come up a lot, so they're a good thing to learn. All right. Now, so here are kind of the rules, okay? And these are these are how you decide which of these things are gonna show you something interesting versus show you something ludicrous, okay? So first up, you use line plots with sequential data, okay? So if there isn't like an order to the data, a line plot isn't gonna make a lot of sense, okay? Um, 
So, for example, if I know I'm plot of, of that gender column, it's just going to be zeros and ones, or, or sorry, zero, one, and twos, right? And it's going to be like all over. What, what does that line even mean, right? Because there's the order of those doesn't really make any sense. Um, so, the, your x axis should have an order, and the differences in y values are meaningful. Okay, so um, when you when you're putting it on there, I'm just trying to think of a good example, but you know, so you can't. It, it has to matter when you go up and down on a graph, right? Um, so that's why age or whatever is is a useful piece of data. Um, and then there's only one y value for each x value. Okay, so um, and this seems kind of like a lot of these I think seem obvious, but uh, when you have more sophisticated data sets, it may not be as clear. Uh, so, but that basically just means is that you only have, you know, when, you know, you only have one age, right? Uh, and that's it. You can't have multiple ages for a given row. Okay. Um, and then, um, and then very commonly, x axis is time or distance. Not always, but a lot of the time. Um, and so, kind of going back to that reverse conversation that I was thinking about. It's so like if you have time or distance, it often makes sense to put it on the x-axis because it'll be clearer to people looking at. And then scatter plots for non-sequential data. So you're looking for associations between the data, um, but there's no, you know, the 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 space between rows in a sense doesn't have doesn't matter. So um, and that's why we you know look at basically like. Uh, the scatter plot of you know total dollars to number of movies. Okay, so they don't have a relationship to each other, it's like numerically. They just have a relationship to each other and the fact that they're on the same row. So does that make sense? Questions? All right. Oh, there's a question. All right. What is it? What is not a reason to use a line plot? All right, can we get a few more in there? All right. Close it there. So, exactly. When you're looking for associations, sounds pretty good. If you like, if you're unclear on this, this is something to you know review, look at later, understand. All right, we get another question. So, which of these plots is best for finding association? All right, get those answers in. I want to flip so we can get to the last bit of this class. All right, going. So scatter plots, exactly. Um, all right, so now we're going to move on to, so far when we've talked about our graphs, right? We've been talking about primarily numerical data. Uh, and so we do line graphs and we do scatters. Um, but now what if we want to do categorical data? Uh, and we will look at the Jupyter Notebook, if I can find my mouse. And we use a thing called a bar chart, okay? 
Um, however, uh, who's here familiar with bar charts? Hopefully most people. Um, we almost always in this class use them horizontally. So just a uh, fair warning um, that they may look weird. Uh, but so we're gonna load uh, this movie table. Um, and let me pull up my cheat sheet and let's grab only a portion of the data. So we can say, oops, top 10 adjusted. Uh, I'll give it away, but I was gonna ask, All right, so what I want to show here is me being tricky. Okay, this is in some ways arguably invalid. So let me scroll back up a little bit. So, what I want is the top movies, like I want the top 10 movies with the highest gross adjusted income or, uh, you know, uh, adjusted gross. Um, However, I know the sorting of the table. So what I do is I'm just going to take some rows out of the table, but I'm going to cheat. I'm just going to say, give me the top 10 rows, right? This is a terrible idea, okay? Why do you think this is a terrible idea? Any guesses? It's not going to give you the, the top growing like movies, right? It will. It'll work. Yeah, I mean that's why I call it a cheat. But it's not that it, it's not that it doesn't work. It's just that it's a terrible idea. I don't. I don't really have very many guarantees that that sorting is the same, right? So what I really should be doing is sorting it first, then I can pull those top ten, right? So just kind of keep in mind, this, especially when I'm demoing it in class, right? I'm going to cheat sometimes because it's faster to type it out. But, you know, think about what this data looks like and make sure that, you know, you don't rely on what you think the data looks like versus making the data actually that way. Yeah. How are we supposed to do this? We don't want to cheat. So I would just literally insert dot sort paren paren, or actually dot sort top adjust or whatever it is, adjusted gross. So I can just sort it first. And then I can do the take and do the top 10 and it'll work just fine. Does that make sense? So let me, sh so I'll just show Um, and let me maybe do it a little bit in pieces. So first up, let me just remind you that this will give me an array of zero to you know, 10, 10 digits, right? So zero to nine. Um, and so that means, and if I pass these numbers to the take command, it means give me the zeroth row, first row, second row, third row, etc. But if I want to be careful about it, what I want to do is make sure that my data is sorted with what I think it's sorted by. So I'm going to sort it by the gross adjusted. And actually, I need it to be descending. Now it's the same sort as we got kind of by default. And then we want to take the top, right? So this is how I should have written it. But because I'm lazy, I didn't. Uh, and I'm 
missing a perm. Right. No, I'm not. I think it's right. Am I? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's always on the tape. So there we go. So this is correct, but it should have used this if I was going to write it all the way out. Um, but when I'm doing stuff in class, I might cheat occasionally. I'll usually put it out when I'm feeling lazy. Um, all right, so this is what I was talking about before. I'm going to, in the interest of time, do the millions conversion. Make it a little more readable. Oops. Except. Okay, so now we just adjusted um, this first adjust column uh, to put it in millions by adding this column here called millions. Just to make it a little easier to read. Um, and then we'll show you, let's line plot the year to the dollars. Right, that doesn't seem to be a good idea. Right, because there's no, there, the relationship isn't there. So instead, uh, we can use what's called a bar chart, which many of you have heard of. and get something a little nicer, maybe. Oh, I forgot I added the other, yeah. only one of the tables. Okay, so let me point out a couple of quick things. So I use bar H, which is a horizontal bar chart. The reason I used a horizontal bar chart is because if you imagine this thing standing up this way, this text, would still be going like this. So it's just gonna overwrite itself. So it's not gonna be very pretty. So I will show it to you so you can see how unpretty it is. So as you can see, right, it's basically illegible. So a lot of the time with the data we happen to be using in this class, most of the time, uh, we will use horizontal bar charts. They are literally exactly the same thing. It's just oriented differently so you can read it. Um, but as you can see, this this graph makes a lot more sense when you're trying to compare this categorical data. Yeah. How I rounded the numbers? I don't think I rounded them. Uh, what what it's doing here? Oh, I guess it is rounded. Um, what it's doing here is dividing everything by a million to make a million column, so we can drop a bunch of those in like significant digits. All right, and then so if we want to show, I think I showed it in the slides already. Um, actually, why don't we? I think I'll save that last bit for kind of next time. Um, if at all, I might just skip it. But let's talk about, oh, I thought there was more in the categorical data. Okay, so basically long story short, right? So we have line plots that we use when we have like, you know, movement along the axes for the numbers that are in them. Um, and then we have, uh, scatter plots when we want to kind of compare the relationship between two sets of numbers. And then we have bar charts for when we want to look at categorical data. Okay, so like the number of dollars that a movie made or whatever. Um, so we'll keep talking about charts and graphs, you know, et cetera. Um, and, but I think that's all I'm going to cover in the class today.
um, aside from my favorite, which are announcements at the midterm. Um, yeah, questions. Sorry, what would you be posting the dress code? So it's in the same place you find like homeworks and labs.